The next important ingredient that we want to talk about in pass rush is giving your young players a chance to rush. Give your guys a chance to let them know that it is a pass down. You as a head coach on the sideline or as a defensive coordinator are almost certain that the offensive team is going to throw a pass. Let them think pass rush. Let them get a pass rush move in mind. Let them change your stance if they need to or their alignment laterally, whatever the case may be, to rush the passer. When I went to coach a defensive line in the Chicago Bears under Mike Ditkin, our coordinator, Vince Tobin, we played a kind of a reading defense. We had gap control, and our total thought on first down and 10, second and six or less, was to hold the offensive lineman off of the linebackers so they could run and make the plays. It was a very good defense, and we were successful. What we taught our defensive lineman is if the down and distance is second and six or more, or if it's third down nickel passing situation, alter your stance, get your pass rush mind and move, get in, a, get in a jet position and take off and rush the passer. I think in high school, if you're not doing this, you gotta give your guys a chance. Use a code word on the sideline as a coach that you think they're gonna throw a pass. Let your lineman know it. Give them an opportunity to change your stance, alter their weight distribution and get ready to get after them. They can put a pass rush move in mind. They know what kind of thing they wanna do, whatever you've been coaching them on and they got a chance to get there. If you don't do that, if your linemen are playing a reading defense, if that's your concept, and you're sitting there in a very balanced stance and you're looking to see how they're blocking for your rush, it's going to be very difficult to have any success. We don't ever get a good rush in the NFL unless we get off when the ball moves or the offensive lineman moves or the first thing that we see moves, we take off. We now have a chance to rush the quarterback. In Chicago, we did it on second and six and more, third and three and more. We jet it and we rush the quarterback. If it happened to be a run, a draw, for example, we reacted to it. Here in Minnesota, the philosophy under Dennis Green and Tony Dungy when I came here, and now Foge Fazio, our coordinator, we're going to jet on every snap. We're rushing the passer on every snap. We don't have to teach our players this. We're getting in a gap. We're trying to penetrate. We're trying to get in the cracks between those linemen. If it's a run, we're going to react to it. The worst thing that can happen to you on the sideline now is don't let an offensive coach, and I was guilty of this as a young coach, get in a sprinter stance like you taught our young guys, take off, rush the quarterback, and yell out there on third and long, watch the draw and watch the screen. Don't let them do that. We react to draws and screens. When it's a pass rush down, let them rush. Now, if you're playing a defense that's balanced and you're reading and you're playing gaps and you're not really penetrating on the snap, when you think as a coordinator on the sideline it's a passing down, give them a call. Jet, go, fire, whatever you want to say. Race, let them know that you think it's a pass let them alter their stance, and let them get after the quarterback. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get any rush. If we run into the blocker on every snap and butt him and place him two-gap, pass rush-wise, that's not going to be as successful. That may be a good concept for run defense, not as good for pass rush. So when it's pass rush, get them on the edge and let them go with a call.